I'm gonna it's Christy. Go ahead and talk so I can load this up fairly quickly. Good so, things going on. So, good body position. Uh, nice long reach breathing. forward. Head position, is, head good. position is good. Not too high in the water and stays level as you turn the Smooth breathe. breathing. Very good extension. And overall, so, above water. Stroke. Uh, your your form and streamline is good. Kick looks, pretty kick good. looks comfortable. Uh, potentially some of these kicks uh, you have a fair bit of kicking, so you're doing like a a six beat kick there, but it's not uh, a tremendously hard or demanding kick. Over time, especially with you know long distance triathlon swimming, you might try to kick less. But that being said, if if that's not wearing out your legs, it's fine. So that's working on increasing the turnover rate. You might have uh, maybe just a, a tad too much glide at the front of the stroke, and by a tad, I mean one tenth of a second. So you want to you want to reach as far as you can, and then start that stroke. Not bad at all. That's a minor minor fix. But that's. Uh, the main thing it's lower that's on the totem pole of important things. Other than the, the timing. Uh, or if you recall from our lesson, you know, the main the, the main fix for you is pole. is working on the catch angle. So you have <clears> I'll talk about that on the underwater portion. What I would call the elbow slip going on, meaning you're not getting your hand and forearm vertical, and you're not maximizing your uh, surface area for pushing yourself forward or pulling yourself forward. Uh, to a lesser extent, you're finishing the strokes early. What you're looking at is rotation. And then here, and you can see line. your hips and legs are staying excellent. right in the line of your upper body. Right it's perfect. The the rotation is good. Your rotation head is not bobbing up and down. Your head's not pulling off to the side when you turn to breathe. So like all that very, uh, very smooth and streamlined. Your hand and shoulder would be pulled, retracted just a bit more. Head position, perfect, no problems at all there. Reach forward. The spot that you're extending your hands you're to. You're pretty much in line with your shoulders. Some of your strokes go a little in front of your head, more so with that right That's arm. Good. And so you want that with, uh, that hand, hand to go right in front of the shoulder as opposed to drifting inward at all. Uh, the reason being when you start your pull, and the line that you're pulling you have a, a slightly better back. starting position. So underwater, uh, hips and legs might just be a tad low, and the easiest way to fix that is to look down as opposed to looking forward. You are looking mostly down, uh, but you're looking at you're looking at about a 40 degree angle. So if you could look a little lower, it may raise up your hips and legs, uh, but it's they're not bad. Uh, continuing to work on the effectiveness of the kick will help. Now the the pull main the main thing to work on when you're pulling back, you're doing what we call an elbow slip, meaning your hand and forearm are not going perpendicular to the bottom of the pool uh, early in the stroke. They do later in the stroke, and to get the most power or efficiency out of those uh, out of the poles that hand and forearm need to go vertical as soon as is possible the high elbow catch in other words the one arm drill which we did a lot of <clears throat> is really the, the best way to practice that doggy pedal drill which I know you did is another good one but it starts with reaching forward as far as you can and then internally shrugging your shoulder so it'll feel like you know you're doing a bit of a twist and then getting that hand and forearm to go down while your upper arm is still angled forward and then the line you're pulling back is good mostly uh, straight back not going under your body not uh, 
weebling off to the side or anything. So a good line on the pullback. So this is ex working on just some extension. And so if you look at this and then go back and look at someone previously, you're getting a little more reach here. The, uh, the balance will be getting, you know, as much reach as you can, but, but not going onto the high side of gliding or pausing at the front of the stroke. Yeah, but this looks good for, uh, for what we're doing here. You can see the space between your, shol your shoulder and your ear is less or non-existent. That's a, that's a good indicator of extending as far as you can. So working on the catch, talking about reach, roll, catch. better. So when you watch from uh, above the water like this, what you want to see is at some point, early, as early as possible in the stroke, that your hand and forearm are not visible, meaning that they've, they've gone vertical since I'm filming from above. That was pretty good. That was good. So, yeah, when the, the hand and forearm disappear from view, that means they've gone vertical. That was pretty good. That was pretty good. So here's uh, freeze frames. This is before you got any feedback. So, pretty good reach. Uh, rotation to your side could be a bit more, and I think we worked on that, you know, working on the extension part of the uh, stroke. And then here you can see your elbow starts to come back towards your body, but your hand and forearm still parallel to the bottom of the pool, hand a little less parallel. Um, but you want to include that forearm in that pulling motion. So right now you're, you're not getting uh, maximum leverage with that left arm. And then it's not till all the way back on the, th the last third of the stroke where your hand and forearm have gone perpendicular. So getting that perpendicular angle with the hand and forearm uh, is going to be a key piece to getting faster. Again, looks like a good reach on that one. Rotation to the side could be a bit more and then a similar sort of pull. Uh, elbow starts coming back towards your torso. Hand is getting some of the perpendicular angle, but the forearm not really. And that's like a 30 degree angle when you want a 90 degree angle at, at this point in the stroke. And um, you know, not until the latter part of the stroke do you get the hand and forearm perpendicular. So keep working on the one arm drill, doggy paddle, and I uh, hope that helps.